Hey, hey, Tony Gadget is here. Just popping in. Now, y'all got to give my mom a cell phone today. Recording on my cell phone instead of my computer here. But wanting to touch on this, this P. Diddy situation that my wife sent me today. I seen a guy from the law firm. I, he's a lawyer. And they were he was doing an update. And I think he said over can't remember how many people it was 3600 or it was a crazy number amount of people that have filed a complaint on p diddy and i think he said they're gonna be representing 120 or something like that of the cases and that's lawsuits which will be civil lawsuits and that there are other names as well and that they're gonna release my wife said they said they're gonna release those names in about 30 days it's other celebrity names or other people names and some of the names have been turned over to the fbi and that some of the people have already been talked to by the fbi so it, a lot been to come out and and what you got to realize about this spirit of little ugly is the spirit of little ugly don't work alone and on one of the videos, Como, Chris Como, was talking to Suge Knight. And Suge Knight was saying, you know, Jimmy Iovine. And he said some other names. He was like, yeah, P. Diddy did this stuff. And he, whatever. But he ain't the only one that was in this. And I read somewhere that Usher might be testifying against P. Diddy. I don't know if that was fake news or not. But i feel like if he is going to testify he would be joining so that he don't get counsel because you never know what people got into and you never know because once these people get taken over once these people get took over by that spirit of little ugly it ain't no telling what they'll get into and the lawyer was talking about a, a minor who was went through some stuff with P. Diddy. A little bit of that there. And then he was talking about another minor, 15, who P. Diddy had that minor singing on his microphone. If you know what I mean. A minor now. When I listen to what the lawyer said, because it was on TikTok, when I listen to what the lawyer said, it made my stomach hurt. My stomach hurt right now. I'm going to tell you, these spirits are real. That's why I'm not going to watch the movie Deliverance. I ain't watching nothing about no spirits. I don't care about it. if somebody got delivered. I'm not going to entertain them spirits because these spirits is real. Just talking about it give you a stomach ache. This stuff real now, but I want you to really think about this. So that's why you got to be careful letting your child spend the night somewhere. And you got to be careful living through your child. You got to make sure you care about your child. You got to make sure you love your child because it's a lot of people that, it's a lot of parents that they, they want to be so famous. They want their child to be famous just like Justin Bieber mom. Here you got this young man and then his mama let him go live or go hang out with P. Diddy. Then you got Usher mama. She let him Go hang out with P. Diddy. The, the what he what he call it? The love camp or the flavor camp. And here he is, a young man, and he's seeing all this stuff. And Usher kind of dry snitch on the interview that Usher did. And and they I said, Well, you let your kids go to the, the love fest or whatever it is. And he said, H no. Put a cuss word in there with it. That right there let me know what Usher was up there saying. And and some of this stuff you got to take to your grave. But when I'm hearing this stuff about P. Diddy, it's helping me understand that P. Diddy could have been up there having Usher into some stuff as a teenager. 
Because the rapper, it was said that the rapper Lil Boosie had a grown woman giving his son some treatment at like 13 or 15. And when you look at Lil Boosie, I mean, he from Louisiana, he's a thug. You don't look at him the same way you look at P. Diddy, but look what he get into. And so imagine somebody as nasty as P. Diddy. And then see, a lot of this stuff happening, don't, don't, people don't be talking. And stuff, ha and money, money moves some things. And remember the spirit a little ugly plays on the spirit a little dummy. So if you broke and you struggling and you trying to make it and all you got to do is come off you a little bit of love making for some money, for some positioning, for some influence, and you don't have no good home training, oh, you coming up off that. You coming up off that. Now, sure, Knight said that they used to take these young men and put a hard boiled egg up them. And if the egg crack, that tell them that the young man not ready yet. <sighs> Y'all got to give them. I'm going to have to take deep breaths every now and then. Because, man. Now, see, I'm visual. I'm, I'm visual. This stuff messing me up. You hear me? And that's what people be calling me. Homophobic. I ain't homophobic. It's just that I have the front part and I got the back part and I know the difference of the sizes. So when I think about what I got in the front, they don't go together. Them two things do not go together. So that's what be making my stomach hurt. And I love boiled eggs. And thanks to Suge Knight, I ain't gonna never be able to eat a boiled egg the same. I'm gonna be getting ready to eat my egg and be smelling stuff on my egg. I'm gonna be like, so thanks a lot, Suge Knight. Your butt in prison. Ain't not doing all that talking. And so, Suge, like, listen, I done went down. He did it was on the East Coast doing all that foolishness, and I'm locked up. Oh, you butt finna get locked up. Sure, night talking. You hear me? And then Pete did it, old security guard, Gene Deal, he doing all this talking. So I want you to understand what this is. This about that exposure. And people be talking about what Cat Williams talking about, the year of exposure. I think I said that before him. He might watch this channel. But Ain't no telling if, because of him being in that circle, ain't no telling if he hadn't got him a little call. Somebody said, hey, was you here or was you there? Because he ain't no prophet now. Know that for sure. He ain't no prophet now, but ain't no telling if just the word went to circulate. So now what you finna see, you finna see a lot of these celebrities doing charity. A lot of these celebrities finna be in Tahiti and Bali. May like they vacationing. No, they just just in case that name get dropped. They wanna they want they gonna wanna strategically be on vacation. Listen to me. I want you to understand that if you maliciously doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, especially if you a man under the sound of my voice, you better get your life right. Because if somebody with the status of P. Diddy and, and people saying that it's the look, it's he messed up with the liquor company. The liquor company, that's what 50 Cent saying. It ain't got nothing to do with the liquor company. It have nothing to do with the liquor company. The liquor company ain't got nothing to do with Cassie telling her story. The liquor company ain't got nothing to do with the man Lil Rod telling his story. It ain't got nothing to do with the lady Jaguar Wright telling her story. This is biblical. Your idols gonna fall. 
what's done in the dark gonna come to the light. And this is what I try to tell y'all, and that's what I tried to tell. That's what I tried to tell Kevin Samuels before he died. Do not play with God. Do not play with God. Guess what? The stuff that you seeing. And just how they said T.D. Jakes a power bottom. Now, personally, it's like on one side I could believe it. Then the other side, I'm like, Lord, don't let it be so. Because for one, that turned my stomach. That turned my stomach. The bitch got a little too much meat on his bone. Uh -uh. Don't let that be so. And they saying it's a lot of other pastors that went to them P. Diddy parties. And a lot of these guys, they'll get into some foolishness now. They will get into some foolishness. So guess what? These names finna start coming out. These names finna start coming now. You hear me? And I thank the Lord that I that I was not and am not big enough to get invited to no P. Diddy party. Because I might have went on accident, just not being naive and just not knowing what's going on. Because I think they said, I think Lecrae said he went. So, it turned my stomach when the, the man say, this man, the lawyer say he got minors coming out telling their story about being touched on and into an in sexual acts as minors with P. Diddy. Now listen, yes, some people could be lying. Some people could be lying. When he said he had 3,600 people, I had to pray. I had to pray because I almost sent me an email in to tell me a lie to be on the, the class action lawsuit. Cause, Cause, with the amount of assets P did it got, that class action lawsuit might be three hundred million. I need me a little sliver, so I had to pray, because I almost, did a keyboard. As soon as that lawyer said, I almost, yes, on the summer eve of. January 38th, 2015. There was a fondling. I was like, and see, that's what I try to tell you. You got the battle. Because, see, I used to be a criminal. I used to be a thief. I used to be a drug dealer. So the devil always going to try you just to, hey, tell you a little lie now. Tell you a little lie. That's what I was telling you about the young lady who, who say she was a lesbian and now she's straight and she married. That don't mean that that spirit leaves. Now, Jesus is a redeemer. But she gonna have to pray every day. If one lady came in the comment talking about she used to, it's different if you was the man, if you was the masculine woman, or if you was the feminine woman. That's a different, that's two different spirits. If you was the feminine woman, that's, that's the spirit of little dummy. You had been, if you was the masculine woman, that could be the spirit of little ugly. That, that's a different spirit. So if you say you come out of that and you could ask any lesbian woman who is a lesbian, if you say, hey, if you change your life and you want to go back to being heterosexual, how hard would it be? She'll be, like, she'll be like, well, it's doable. I could go be with a man, but that don't mean I'm not still going to lust after women. I'm not still going to see women. I'm not still going to think about women. No, whatever spirit that we have flirted with, whatever spirit that we have succumbed to, that is the spirit that Satan will come back with and repeat the attacks. He will give you rest. He'll give you a little break because you resisted him. So he flee, but he's coming back and he will use different people. So 
he bring this woman and she musky, that's not triggering that spirit because you like, hmm, smell like peered on them. She ain't chain that pad. So that that turned your stomach. You ain't, but now he bring this woman and she just a swoo, she's smelling good, she looking good, she got good conversation. She laughing and she laying her head on your shoulder. Nah. That spirit that you used to struggle with. It get woke up. It get woke right on up. That's the same thing for those of us who have struggled with the spirit of lust. Spirit of fornication. It's certain women or men, if you're a woman and you struggle with that, if you're a man and you struggle with that, it's certain people you can talk to and it don't it don't disrupt your spirit. It don't bother your spirit because you're not attracted to them. You're not physically attracted to them. You're not spiritually attracted to them. You're not emotionally attracted to them. You're not financially attracted to them. But then it's certain people that you almost forget you. You almost forget you were redeemed. You go, Woo. Ooh, think about it. You could be abstinent. But the right package come along. The right person come with the right presentation and smell and package and conversation. That abstinence out the window. So you have to, if you walking right, if you in the body of Christ, you got to, you got to get a lesson from this P. Diddy situation. You got to understand, listen, you got to stay on the straight and narrow you got to do what you're supposed to do because whew, this thing is real. And when you look at this, I'm like, oh, I'm like, are you serious? Like, are you serious? You telling me that P. Diddy had children? The first, the first one that was messed with that the lawyer said was a nine-year-old. The person telling their story, and they was nine years old. And then he would, they saying that he would promise a record deal. I sure hope that ain't Bow Wow. Said that he would promise a record deal to the parents and to the, to the child. Talk about deal with the devil. Now listen, this the thing though. When that spirit is rendered helpless, null, void, ineffective, it will leave the host and that host will give up the ghost. Meaning Jeffrey Epstein See, a lot of people don't understand why we not supposed to be in idolatry. But what the adversary does is he ties and he binds your idols. So the school principal, the police chief, the head basketball coach, the head football coach, these people who have access to disrupt children's lives, to disrupt community advancement, these people are, are lured in through sexual immorality. And then Satan controls them like a bit in the horse's mouth. And the goal of the crooked mayor, the crooked pastor, the crooked superintendent principal is to steal, kill, and destroy, to disrupt community advancement. See, somebody could go to P. Diddy and be a Christian and be deciding that they're going to do secular music to reach more people and to build a platform, and then they're going to lead people to Christ. That's how they've been deceived. 
But when they go over there and they get the line and toe out of them, now they stuck. Now they silence. Their voice is stolen. They can't, they can't, they can't barely talk about God. Because P did it and tore them out the frame. So now they're like, oh, I, I feel convicted. Then the next thing you know, they at the Diddy parties, they at Will Smith parties, they at Jamie Foxx parties. They all, they, they not at all the parties. Wore out the frame. Loose as a goose. R. Kelly parties. Bill Cosby parties, Russell Simmons parties, all of this debauchery. See, that's why people don't understand that today, see, back in the day, in, in the Bible days, people not only was deceived through sexual immorality, but it was golden calves. It was engraving images. It was false gods that they would bow to and they would worship. Today, the false gods that people worshiping, it, it's not really a calf, a golden calf. It's not really a, this whatnot. Some people got their crystals. It's, it's their crystals and it's their tarot readers. It's their psychics. It's their horoscopes. It's stuff like that. Some people have made those things their god to do whatever they wanted to do. But it ain't like it was today. The enemy using sexual immorality. The enemy is using pornography. If if you watch porn and you math and or masturbating, you under demonic influence, and you might not even realize that that's the gateway. See, cause you sitting there like, well, it's just me. I'm just by myself. It just I ain't bothering nobody. I ain't giving out STDs. I ain't catching STDs. I ain't getting nobody pregnant. I ain't getting pregnant. I ain't creating soul ties. Yeah, you creating a soul tie. You tying your soul to those people on that nasty movie. You tying your soul to the people you lusting after in your mind. You tying your soul up. You binding your soul to where you can't be used. You can't be used. You can't be trusted. You can't be elevated. Can't nothing happen good for you in your life as it relates to your purpose because you bound. And see, this is how the adversary, he tying up these individuals with secrets they got to take to the grave, but not realizing that somebody going to be set free and somebody going to tell them secrets. And see, the thing about it is, if it was just normal stuff, that's why he goes deeper. That's why he, he, he does more. He gets you deeper into the sin. Remember, just like uh, what the man was, Andrew Gillum. Andrew Gillum, he had that spirit on him. And here, here go this brother. You know, just just look, he you know, he just look just a trustworthy, and here he go, boom, shot out of cannon. Shot out of cannon. We think he finna take over. Next thing you know, all these people come out telling this story. Travis Dyson tells reporter Wesley Lowry that he had met Gillum a week or two before the March 2020 hotel room incident on the gay dating app Grinder. I could have swore somebody said Grind. Oh, they said Hinge. I be confusing Hinge with Grinder because. I was talking to one of my mentees, and he was like, that's why I got on Hinge. And I'm thinking in my head, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, what you said? You got on. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking he said grinder, but this, now, here go Gillum now. Here go Gillum. And see, remember what I told you about the spirit of Lil Ugly? It wants a pedestal. It wants the limelight. Think about it now. P. Diddy. He could have been doing this in secret and quiet. There's men who doing it in secret and in quiet. Andrew Gillum. He up there on Grinder. 
what is you on Grinder? And that the two had met up multiple times for paid sexual encounters. See, this is what I'll be trying to tell y'all. Yeah, the title might say P. Diddy. I don't know. But I don't just be talking about one person. I ain't just talking about the man on the yellow couch or the other podcasters or just P. Diddy or just this spirit running rampant. So I don't want you to just, don't just fixate on the, the people you could see on a platform. You got to look at your pastor with a watchful eye. You got to look at your child father. You got to look at your brother, your son, your daddy. You got to watch everybody because this spirit could come upon anybody. You hear me? So I, I was telling my wife, I said, I thank the Lord that when I was out there, I had enough upbringing to not take nothing from no woman or to not deal with no underage. That everything I did was consensual with a woman. Because see, think about it now. When we hear something about somebody, a lady called me, women call me all the time about celebrities that they done slept with. And, the, and nobody knows. And the celebrity living this lie, whatever. But I'm like, well, he didn't take none from you. You was little dummy. You knew he was married. Or you knew he didn't want a relationship. Or you knew this right. And you chose to sleep with him. He didn't put a mile in your drink and you ain't even know it. Like Rick Ross. You bust it wide open voluntarily. So don't nobody care about that. Now if he took something from you. Or you was under age. Nah. Folks care about that. But if you knew the man was married. Or you knew the man was secretive about relationships. So you knew the man was non-committal. You made a conscious choice with the spirit of little dummy to climb up under that man. And see, this the thing. This how he gets you. Now, I ain't know, I ain't know Gillum was doing all this. Andrew passed out after taking G, an ecstasy type drug often used by gay men to enhance their sex drive. Now, this is my first time ever hearing about this at this big age of 40 in 2024. I ain't never heard of G. What the raw? So you mean to tell me these men out here getting dug off in and taking stuff, taking Pill for it. Which, when combined with alcohol, can knock people out. He said that on that night and others, both he and Andrew used G and other drugs. See, this why, you know what? This why I might let my son get it rain, right? This why you got to let your child live a little bit. I ain't saying let your child go crazy, but you got to let your child, because this right here sound like somebody who didn't get to live as a child and was raised to be perfect, just like people be so happy about their child going to college in 14. That's a mistake. Because your child going to college at 14, it's somebody there with a spirit a little nasty. It's a 20-year-old man that's been to put hard anger laying on your 14-year-old daughter while she at that college campus. That ain't nothing to be proud of. Let your child be a child. Let your child grow up as a child. We, we get enough time to be an adult. I seen, I seen a Caucasian lady with her son. He 11 years old, and he get up, and he cook his own breakfast, and he do all this. It's like, that's a child. Get your raggedy behind up in there, and you cook that child breakfast. Let that child be 11 years old. Don't have no 11-year-old acting like a grown man who go out and got to work 40 hours a week and pay his own bill. Let that child be a child, because when you make them grow up too early, he finna get into pornography, and then he gonna be addicted to pornography. And next thing you know, at 25, his butt gonna be Jeffrey Dahmer. Because he bored with regular life. So now he wanna go cut him a heart out and sit down at the table and eat the heart of a black man that he just met in the gay club. That's what happened when you don't let your child be a child. You see what I'm saying? And see... And then the childhood got to be stable. See, what Pete did it, they talking about his parents was criminals. 
I ain't know all that. Well, I, that's what they saying. I don't know how true it is, but now he grew up seeing crime, so to speak. Go to Howard, what have you. And he he looked like his parents had all the genetics, and then he was kind of like a mutation a little bit. Because, you know, he did have an interesting look to him. And typically when you had that interesting little look to you, your parents had some good genetics. But then a lot of times, two attractive parents don't necessarily make an attractive child all the time. And a lot of times, two parents who may be seen as less attractive or unattractive, a lot of times, their child might be the most attractive. Now, I learned this growing up because the prettiest girls, mamas, looked at blessed. The Lord loved them, it, meaning they had a look about them. They had a look about them. And then the, the regular, normal-looking girls, they mama was beautiful. And that was always perplexing to me as a young man in middle school and high school. I'm like, man, I ain't expect your mama to look like that. Now. But that happens sometimes, how genetics works. It's a, it's a strange thing. And so you got to let your child live, and you got to understand that the spirit of little ugly, the spirit of little dummy, these demonic spirits, they don't just want us as adults. They want our children. So you got to talk to your children. That's why I talk to my son and I try to shame him. Not necessarily shame him, but I talk to him and I talk to him about the lameness and the softness and the weakness of boys who watch porn and masturbate. I talk to him about how beta male that is. And how as a man, you got to develop discipline in the dark. You got to have self-control. And if you don't have self-control as a man, you're not fit to be a man. You're not fit to be married. You're not fit to be a father. And I talk to my son about that because I know there's no voice he's going to respect more than mine. So I define manhood to my sons. Instead of letting P. Diddy define manhood. I don't let the star athlete. They got the 17-year-old boy on Alabama. Dominant on that field. He painted his nails. Spirit a little nasty on him. And his mom and daddy probably want to be rich so bad that they're afraid to shame him and say, son, men do not paint their nails. They're afraid to get cut off. They're afraid that he going to cut them off and say, I ain't giving y'all none of my NIL money because y'all trying to say that I'm a certain kind of way because I'm painting my nails. So they silence themselves. Me, I will eat dirt and sleep under a tree in the woods before I let my son paint his nails and not hear from me. He going to hear from me. He gonna, I don't care if he never talked to me again. He going to hear from me. If he go and get a woman of another race out of self-hate, he going to hear from me. Now, if they just happen to be working on the class project and he tell me they just had a great conversation, they hit it off. I don't care what, what a race is. But if he tell me, oh, I got this race of woman because black women is dirty or black women is stank or black women is loud or black women is mean. He got, man, he finna hear from me. Oh, so what you a punk? Oh, so yeah, he gonna hear from me. And see, we letting our kids raise themselves. We let, we living through our children. It's a lot of parents that they so happy they, they two year old could read the dictionary. Sit your grown musket behind, butt down somewhere, and let that two-year-old bump their gums. They got the whole rest of their life to read a dictionary. Stop living through your child. Don't worry about what your child support your child, love your child. My son want to be my son want to be pro soccer players. I'm supporting them. I don't care if they make it or not. I want them to make it for their own sake, cause that's their dream. But I'm gonna show them what they could do if they don't make it who they could be and how they could be and that life is bigger than that game. But I'm a supporter. 
But see, this how that spirit a little ugly and a little dummy. This how it seeps in. So imagine that, imagine that nine year old mama and daddy. Imagine what, imagine how, what, how they feeling now that they child telling their story of being sexually assaulted by P. Did at nine years old. And then at fifteen year old, sixteen year old, seventeen year old. And guess what? Some of the people that was assaulted, they already dead. And some of the people that was assaulted, they got so much going on in their life, and they got so much family. They kids is at an age, they, they going to take it to their grave. Everybody not finna tell their story. Everybody not finna tell the, it, it, it's only certain people now. And see, some of these people who telling their story, as sad as it is to say, some of them was turned out after that experience. And now they could be on drugs and turned out and just only telling their story, hoping for a payout. Some of these people, they ain't even, they not even telling for pure reasons. You're going to have some of them that's telling for pure reasons, but some of them, that spirit's still on them. So if they could expose themselves and get them a check of 50000 100000 out the class action lawsuit, oh, and it's going to be some people that make up some stories because they got a Jezebel spirit on them and they just want them a check or they just want to be seen, they want to be heard. It's going to be some people that lie. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to happen. Not everybody going to tell the truth. Not everybody going to tell the whole truth. And a lot of people who got a truth to tell ain't going to tell it. So, see, that's how a lot of people, that's how a lot of us get to walk around and act perfect and act like ain't, we ain't never did nothing, ain't never went through nothing because our skeletons ain't talking. But, see, you keep taking grace for granted, the skeletons going to start talking. You don't change your life. Them skeletons gonna start talking. And see, sometimes what happens is them spirits, they circle back around. So you could have did something with somebody and you fell off. You fell off your path and you did something with somebody and then you move forward. You start posting Bible scriptures. You start doing all this. That spirit, that person circled back around. Hey, I just happened to be in town. It just tests you. To see if you're going to be like, oh, okay, God bless, have fun. We got a place called Papa Dose. We got a place called Crustaceans. We got to make sure you check that out. God bless you. And go on about your business. But now you let that spirit come back around and then you say, oh, really? Where are you going to be? Okay, let's meet up. Let's let's connect. Next thing you know, you right back in that defiled bed. And that spirit say, up, oh, you ain't changed, still got you. So guess what happens? Now your clock start all back over. Your clock of righteousness, of, how, of where you was about to be elevated, where you was about to be used, it starts all the way back over. God can't trust you. God can't trust you because you right back in that sin. You ain't learned your lesson. You were faking. You got to get it together. You have got to get it together. And when you get that thing together... That's when your life going to change. And so don't let this thing right here. And see, the thing about it is what they saying about P.D., I could see it in his eyes. When nobody was saying nothing, I was looking and I was like, I, I feel like he had Biggie kill or had Tupac kill. I said, I just, I said, he want too much limelight. And I'm like, he ain't got a lick of talent and be messing the song up. I'm like, how can you have the artist's best interest if you keep getting on the song talking and you messing the song up? I'm like, at least with Kurt Franklin a little behind, he get on there, he talk in tune. He talk in sync with the song and it don't mess it up. I'm like, Pete did get on the song and be messing the song up. I'm like, you be right there. You be, yo, yo, here go Pete Diddy. Take that, take that. You like, oh. <sighs> Change the song, man. And so that right there, that said something to me. I'm like, hold on. So this is the thing. This is why I'm going into a season of calling stuff out because when I see stuff early, I'm calling it out because too many people get hurt when it don't get called out. That's why I'm telling y'all about these fake conferences that y'all going broke on. You going broke to go to a conference and you finna walk out, you finna walk out of there emptier than you walked in because you done spent all your money. You done spent all your money to go and now 
all, all only thing happened, your emotions get played on and you listen to a bunch of word salad. And fake humility. And then people will call those of us who calling the stuff out, oh, we arrogant. We rude, we arrogant, we grieving the Holy Spirit, all of that right there for calling it out, calling a spade a spade. But the people who lie to you and deceiving you so that they could line their pockets, they humble, they disciples, they loving, they kind, they non-judgmental, they all of that. That's exactly what they want you to believe. Exactly what they want you to believe. See, we live in a world, and this right here is the deception of the demons. We live in a world where real is called fake, and fake is called real. Real is called jealous. Real is called insecure. Real is called judgmental. And then the liars, the fakes, the deceivers, they call humble, transparent, honest we call good evil and call evil good we truly in the last days we truly in the last days to be in willing sin today you are a fool because the lord could return any day now now a thousand years is like until one day unto the lord so we could be in the last years for thousands or more years but the Lord can return any day. If you go get in a defiled bed right now, you's a fool. You choosing to be foolish instead of listening to wisdom crying out in the streets. So listen, we, we going into this season of exposure. And God is trying to give you time and give you grace to get your life right. And see, it's one thing you do on ignorance. It's one thing you do on ignorance. It's one thing you do on poverty. It's one thing you do on just scarcity, just a lack. But when you are complicit, when you are intentional about your sin, that's when you're gonna play, you're gonna pay a price. And the thing about it is, is, is you have to realize that we cannot hide. A lot of people don't understand that you cannot hide. Like, you cannot fool God. You can't do it. Like, you're going to get exposed. Somebody going to come tell their story. And see, the thing about somebody telling their story is it just causes confusion. It just, it, it's noise. Like, you could have not been wrong. You could have been in a sexually complicit consensual situation but just them telling their story they could position themselves as gullible as a victim as a fool as being misled and then here you are you like man well i ain't even do nothing the whole situation was it was it was incidental it was consensual it was this and people just and but then at the same time not everybody looking at you like oh, oh was it are we sure hmm i knew i felt something strange about you so now people gonna i i, I sent my wife a screenshot of a lady who liked my post on instagram because instagram showed it to me and on her page and she don't even follow me, but it Instagram put her in my notification by herself. And it was like, such and such, like your real. And so I'm like, okay, well, who is such and such? Because it had a blue check on there. And so I always click those to see who these people is. Because I done seen dignitaries on there, people with 30 million followers and all of that. And I'd be curious. So I clicked on the lady whole page she half naked. She half naked, she in lingerie. I screenshot, I sent it to my wife. I say, see, this right here is the trick of the enemy. Cause this person don't even follow me. She knows she verified, she liking my post. And she know that this is how men pick up women online. Because even honest God fearing men, that's how they meet their girlfriend. 
through the women who like their posts or the women who watch their story. So these women know this. So I know she done liked the man post before and the man done slid in her DM. Or he done follow her, then slid in her DM. And that's how she got his attention by liking the post. So that is a part of the game. And it seems innocent. It seems like it's nothing. But all that's all a man need. And so there, I'm pretty sure there have been married men, there have been pastors, there have been athletes, there have been all kind of men who have fell for those likes. And they slid into that DM inappropriately. And so, or they slid into the DM faking like they networking and then in a few weeks took it to the inappropriate. See me, if I network, I'm finna get me a client. I'm finna do me some business. So sometimes I network with these people because they have influence and I want to be able to help people with influence use that influence the right way. But God has given me the strength and the wisdom to stay in bounds. And that also then gives me more influence because now the people I'm working with realize that I'm not going to come on to them sexually and try to sleep with them and shoot a shot and say, hey, I want to be with you or hey, I want to leave my wife for you. So now they say, wow. And so what, what the Lord does is he raising us up, some men and women to go out in the field because the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. So people could see true Christians and see real integrity in every aspect of life, helping the needy. Now, I don't mean just the homeless. I mean, those who might have a genuine need that you may know, you may have grew up with them, listening to them. People who could be suicidal, could be on their last leg. You answer the call. You talk to them. You show love and, and show a separation between love and hate. What I mean by this is I have friends and not friends. I have family who are in a homosexual lifestyle. I don't look down my nose at them. I don't disrespect them. I don't do anything, but yet they know my message is the word of God. So they know that I don't understand their lifestyle and don't condone their lifestyle, but I'm not going to treat them like the plague. So they get to see and feel the experience, the love of Christ. But they also get to see us, see me stand on business kingdom business so they see like oh he is nice to me but he don't make an exception for my lifestyle or for how i choose to live because it is against his belief system it's against the holy bible technically based on the word of god so when they take and they see that then they say okay this is what this is this what this means you might be the only Bible somebody read. Remember that now. Remember that. So you got to understand that. So see how you see how Gillum got caught up, right? Now you got the black man. I don't know his name. Maybe it's in North or South Carolina. The black man, they saying that they done found chat comments from pornography websites back in the day. Stuff he said, he trying to say he ain't said it. No, I, no, I kind of feel that on your spirit, brother. Ugh, your spirit giving me a little pornographic chat room, thunk keyboard warrior. Cause you get too, you get up there and get too loud. You get up there and sounding a little too Uncle Tomish. You get up there a little boot lickingish. So I could, I could, I could kind of believe you commenting on the on the porn website. He trying to say that's not gonna slow us down, and now somebody could be lying. Now me personally, when I look at them, I believe it. I believe it. that's just what my spirit picking up. I could be wrong. That's why the Bible say judge not, so that you be not judged. Cause I could be wrong, and but because I'm judging him, somebody might look at me and be like, "Yeah, Tony, you like an old porn website commenter." But but you see how. You see how the devil do? See, God has no respect to a person's meaning. He loves us all. But there's still uniqueness to the each different 
each different each race have its strengths each set of genetics have its strength so when you look at hispanic asian black white indian indigenous native american native this native that when you look at all these different races and nationalities you look at the caribbean islands you look at those people you look at south america north america all the different places, Africa, Europe, Asia. When you look at people, you see a uniqueness and everybody have their strength. Now, how is it that here go, you got a black superstar in politics like Gillum. You got a, a very powerful black entertainment person like P. Diddy. You got the father figure to black America, like Bill Cosby. You got one of the greatest R&B singers ever in R. Kelly. And then even Michael Jackson, when he, and then he go get his skin dyed and like to lay in the bed with minors. So they said, and he said he ain't touch them or nothing like that. He just liked to hang out and, and be friends. And, and he liked it. And he had a little childlike voice, arrested development but was such an artist to the point that had he been used for God, he would have changed, changed the world. Now, Bob Marley music went all around the world and he was, a, he was a masculine man and he was biracial, black mama, white daddy. So that even that shows the, the power, the strength in races coming together Races unifying and creating a voice. Now, he was, you know, Selassie and all that into the Selassie and all that and Rastafari. But he still had a message that represented love and unity. And that could start the path to somebody and then they end up finding Christ. But, and then this here, this here other guy, black guy. Who on the websites talking nasty. You see how. The adversary will put a little hook. He'll put a little hook. And he try to get you out of there. See if you could bring change. He want to get you out of there. That's why it's been a lot of people in the comments. Lord he let, we want to pray for Tony Gasson. Pray. You ain't got to put that in the comment. Don't speak that on me. You see they got Malcolm X out of there. They got Martin Luther King out of there. Now, for me, they're not going to be able to find nothing on that sexual side. They ain't going to be able to find nothing on that side. For me, what they're going to be trying to, what they're going to be trying to do is, oh, let's see if he finna pay these taxes. They're going to be trying. So I can end up 55 and be writing letters from prison like Paul. I write to you, city of Atlanta from prison with these unpaid taxes. Cause I was out there on the yacht. Kessel son. So that's not, they ain't gonna be able to find nothing sexual on me now. They ain't gonna be able to, oh, Tony was out here with these children. He was out here with these minor. No, play boy. I don't get down like that. Cause see, I actually was him. See, if you notice all of these men, none of these men was him. None of these men was a star football player, star basketball player. Listen to who I'm talking about. R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby, Russell Simmons, Sean Combs, Andrew Gillum, the, the black man right here on the website. He looked like he might have played some offensive, defensive line or something like that, but I don't know what he did. See, that's who, that's what the adversary does. He plays on people's insecurity. He plays on their vulnerability. He plays on, even like Kanye West losing his mind. He go over and he... He, he go and play with the Lord. Next thing you know, he lose it all. P. Diddy started playing with the Lord. See, I believe like people like with T.D. Jakes and these different pastors, I believe they know God enough that if they walk wrong and done wrong, I believe they, could, they know to repent before they get exposed. And I'm praying that if they've done anything wrong, if they've done anything that's shameful, behind the scenes and they was in willing sin, I pray that they repent. I pray that they believe in the Bible that they supposed to be teaching from. 
I pray that 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 that, that happened for them. Because when you know the Lord, we, we know that we can repent. But a lot of these people, they don't experience, they really don't experience the true power of the Lord. So they don't really have a fear and a reverence. So they will get up and they will talk about the Lord and be playing with the Lord because they honestly deep down think the Lord is a fictional character. They think it's not really real. And so they'll play with it. And just like even with the Kevin Samuel situation, and I'm not saying that's why he died because he had other ailments and issues, but he started to, it was some time that he started to make Christian women feel shamed about wanting to be abstinent. And then you got a lot of these red pill dummies that they try to shame women about abstinence and being born again virgins. And they try to make fun of it. Not realizing that a lot of these women is doing this, trying to get in right standing with God. So when you take and you shame somebody for being in right standing with God, you become an enemy of God. You working against God because somebody trying to live righteous and do the right thing. And you telling them that the right thing is the wrong thing. You're going to pay a price. It don't, it, we don't know the day or the time, but you're going to pay a price. Just like them boys on um, Fresh and Fit. Now, me being a man, I could look at them and tell that both of them was treated as lames They whole life. That they was treated as lames. That they was bullied, they was talked about, they was mistreated, and they become a grown man, and they get some air in their chest. But guess what? They keep getting demonetized because they were doing the work of the devil. And then they shaming women who trying to live right, who trying to renew their life, renew their mind. If a woman used to be promiscuous and now she want to live right, they make fun of her. Instead of letting that woman grow up and glow up, they make fun of her and try to shame her back into her whoremongering. Guess what? You telling people that living righteous and doing the right thing and changing your life is stupid and lame and a waste of time. You working against God. You going to pay a price. You going to lose it all. You going to get exposed. And the way it's going to happen is they're going to they're gonna be so blinded. These type of men, I ain't just talking about them two podcasts. I'm talking about all, all this sister, all these people. They're going to be so blinded by their lust that they're going to meet a 15-year-old who pretends to be 18. Got a fake ID. And they're going to sleep with that 15-year-old. And then, and then when they stop buying that 15-year-old uh, Aritzia and Aloe and Lululemon, that 15-year-old coming out and telling her story because she got the Jezebel spirit on her that got on her from her porn-watching daddy, and now she want to be famous, so now she finna come out and expose these men for digging off in them. And then, boom. Because, see, the thing about what people don't understand, you could sign your name in blood. You could pledge allegiance to Satan. You could work for the devil, but the devil don't have an allegiance to you. The devil going to use you while you useful to try to not get you to get a platform to knock people off of a righteous path. And then when he is done with you and people start to see that you stupid, people start to see that you lame, people start to see that you dumb and people stop listening to you and your voice starts to lose its effectiveness and its power because people are being awakened to, to your foolishness. The devil going to expose you. To go ahead and just shut you up. Just go ahead and, all right, you you useful, you've been used, you done, boom. And, and people don't understand the spiritual side of this. But I want you to understand, don't look at this high level. This also happening right in your little church. It's people in your church that's moving like this. It's people at your children's school that's moving like this. It's people on your police station moving like this. It's superintendents, your mayor, your senator, your governor, your whoever, public defender, General advisor, what are you call that? Prosecutor. This in every realm. This is in every realm. This here foolishness. So you got to be mindful. And when you see this stuff happen, this is the only reason why I'm talking about it, because I want you to take and relate it to everyday life. And I want you to look at it on every level and pray for your children, talk to your children, enlighten your children, 
introduce them to the things and the wiles of the world before the world. You're not doing them no favor by not talking to them about sex. You're not doing them no favor by not talking to them about condoms. You're not doing them no favor. What you think you're hiding from them, the world is showing it to them and you making them susceptible to the P. Diddy's of the world. Because your local dope boy can meet your daughter while she walking home from school or while she at the at the movie theater. And she pop out the movie theater with her friends and they walk in the Cold Stone Creamery. Your local dope boy, your local Jeffrey Dahmer, your local Ted Bundy, your local P. Diddy in there right then talking to her. And he taking, he pay for their food. And then he asked them, can he have their phone number? Because he got a company and he about to do a commercial and he want them to be in the commercial. Next thing you know, but he said, don't tell your mama them because they're not going to want you to be in this commercial because it's going to pay you too much money and they don't want you to be grown up too soon. So we'll talk on WhatsApp where the messages, we could get the messages to delete because I got some high profile clients that they got their messages set like that on WhatsApp where it delete like every day or every two days. And I go to read about what they said and it'd be like, message gone. I'm like, what in the world are you on in WhatsApp doing? I, what you got going on in here? Why this got to be deleting? I, but that's so now, so now you got to check your child phone. Now you go, you, you might find some stuff you don't want to find, but you got to check that phone. Because especially if you let them go out to the movie, you let them go out to the beach, you let them go out to the friend house, you let them go out to wherever they get on, on a chat room. So they got to know about this stuff. You got to, you got to share this stuff. You got to talk to them about it. I remember I talked to my son about stuff and guess what? Now at 17, he the only boy that ain't had his first kiss yet because he realized it is, it's fruitless. He realized it's meaningless. It don't mean nothing. He's saving himself. He realized it's fruitless. It don't, Cause I talked to him at nine years old and he said, dad, my stomach hurt. You making my stomach hurt. But at nine years old, when I started getting out there. So that's why I talked to him early, even though his life different than mine. So now he know better. So now he know. And he like, dad, I'm doomed. I'm not going to be able to meet a wife because he said, cause I want to save myself to marriage. I said, well, son, you know, even good women have slept with one, one guy. And he was like, uh-uh, I can't do it. He said, ugh, that made my stomach hurt thinking about it. Picturing her, she done been with another man. He was like, oh, I can't do that, dad. He said, no, I can't do that, dad. I said, all right, son, you're going to have to join Fellowship of Christian Athlete. You're going to have to join the local church at the college and get in their life groups. You're going to have to be in the student body government. You're going to have to network. I said, it's going to be versions out there, but it might only be 10 of them. But you're going to have to network. I said, son, you might have to start the group for the... For, the purity group so that you can meet your wife in that group that you founded. I say, but the Lord going to do it for you because he know your intentions. I say, you might have to tell your testimony and not worry about getting bullied and getting picked on. Like be proud of saving yourself. And that's what I tell my son. I don't try to do like little Boosie and get my son no fellatio and no teenage and all that. No, I try to tell my son, save yourself because it ain't worth it. You ain't getting, you ain't gaining nothing. You ain't missing nothing. Like, wait, save yourself. Yes, I didn't save myself. Yes, I was real out there. Yes, people say, I was talking to a young man we bumped into in the streets of London, the uh, streets of Oxford, Oxford, England. Me and my son was over there for, for my sister-in-law wedding. We was out there as a family. And the young man, he had a young black brother, he has with earrings, and we stopped and we were talking to him. And I was telling him why I don't want my son to get no earring because I don't want him to get turned out. Like, I don't want him to go to feeling himself. I don't want him to get too high and mighty and all of that. And then mess around and young lady throw herself on him. He get turned out how I was. And we talking about it. And my dad, I mean, my son was like, yeah, he, he, he was like that, man. He was like that. He was out there. And the young man I'm talking to, he like 22 or something. He was like, man, you had that many women? Young brother, he was like, wow, man, that's crazy. And so they they look up to that. I'm like, no, bro. That's 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 when you young and dumb. That's being lost. That ain't that ain't manly. That ain't no alpha male. That's that's dumb. That's dirty D. Dumb D. I was a dummy. Save yourself. Don't do what I did. But then people try to call that hypocritical. Why are you telling people to do what you eat? What you eat? It's like, dummy. That's what you're supposed to do. 
Because somebody go do what I do, they might come back with A's. The Lord graced me so that I would try to get people not to live how I was living from the age of 15 to 21. Out there. And so this is what you got. You got to talk to your children. It ain't just about P. Diddy. Because if you realize P. Diddy had your son. P. Diddy had your daughter. P. Diddy, no, he had your son. He, that's that's the crazy thing. He didn't even want he didn't even want the little girl. He out there in the he wanted little boys. Now listen, I'm gonna tell you what. He better be glad it was my son. Cause I'll be right there in that district and go outside and bust into a store and steal a hundred thousand dollars. So they got to put me right in there with them. He wouldn't even make it a trial if it was my son that he did like that. And so that's why, now, nah, Lord, forgive me. I don't put nobody thought in nobody's mind. But everybody already thinking that anyway. But Venice's mind say after the Lord. Venice's mind say after the Lord. But listen to me. That's what you got to realize. P. Diddy, it's not. My wife, old basketball coach, got in trouble for that. Not too long ago. When she was in high school, her basketball coach, one of the coaches, not the head coach, because it was a woman, was touching, touching on them little girls, sleeping with them little girls, sleeping with them high schoolers. Grown, musky man, sleeping with them high schoolers. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. And she had already talked about it and had told about it, and then boom. So here it is, little city, little town, no name man, boom, somebody told their story. Or somebody's mama found the text messages. So the exposure is not just about the celebrities and, and the Yellow Couch podcasters and the, uh, the fornicating Christian podcasters. It ain't just about them. It's about your city. It's about your household. It's about your church. It's about your school. Your eyes got to be open where you at. Don't don't look and say, "Oh, this ain't gonna pass by me. This ain't gonna happen to me. This ain't it, it, it's impossible." No, you got to be ready. You got to be prayed up, stayed up, and not laid up. And the truth ain't being made up. Cause listen, it's coming, and you got to be ready. So listen, be mindful. Be prayerful, be diligent, and pray for wisdom, pray for knowledge, pray for understanding. Because what you want to do is you want to develop discernment. So, because when you stop getting deceived by these fake conferences, that's going to also strengthen your development to stop getting deceived in the dating world. That's going to strengthen your discernment the way you're not being deceived by your children and, and what they getting caught up into with the spirit of little ugly and little nasty and little, and little dummy and little smarty. Now you're, going, now you're going to be able to see and catch up on stuff. And you got to talk. You got to talk. And you got to talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Get everybody. If you need, you might need to start a Bible study. Now, you ain't charging $250 like the Acts 42 conference. But you might need to start a Bible study free of charge, free of charge, and get on freeconferencecall.com or get on Zoom and send that link to all your friends and family. Hey, every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. to 8.45, here go the link. Put them all on a little mailing list. These sites, MailChimp and these different mailing sites, they'll let you add all the email addresses up to a certain amount, free of charge. Send the email a lot. Send that right there. Boom. Y'all get on there and, and you read your chapter. Read your chapter or read your few scriptures and talk about it. Don't be on there too long now. Don't be on there too long. Want to listen to yourself talk. Just get on in there, 45 minutes, hour. Get on off. You might need to be the one that brings this shine that light into the darkness for your friends and family or your co-workers or whoever because this stuff gonna start to seep around and and think about it we all have been in households we all have been in families we all have been in situations where this spirit that we see got p diddy 
We done seen that spirit in local households. If not your own household, if not our own household, we done seen it in our neighbor household. Just like the it come the news the, um not long ago, maybe a month or two ago, where the young lady had a a birthday party and the daddy put NyQuil or put no put some type of little sleep drug in, in the girl's food. And one of the girls went to feeling woos and went to feeling weird and seen the daddy poke his head in. And then she called her mama and was like, hey, come pick me up. Mama came over there, boom, midnight, pick, pick her up. Midnight, one o'clock. That was that saint, that was that spirit of P. Diddy right there. That man was finna go in there and while them girls knocked out, if he would have seen a mouth open, he was finna just get them little pictures, get them some little pictures, get them some little touches. And, and here it is, your son and your daughter doing a sleepover. See, now my son just now can sleep over at 17. But even with that, though, you still got to say, hey, listen, man, you go to feeling woozy. You go to feeling a little off now. Your friend daddy could be nasty. Friend mama could be nasty like Potiphar wife. Was it Potiphar wife that was trying to get Joseph, tried to rip them clothes off, get Joseph put that wood on them? Listen, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Because it, it was a grown lady like that, that that was close to one of my friends. And she used to sleep with the teenagers. Teenagers over there at my friend's house, she'll wear them right on out. Hop right on that thing. Teenagers. It's school teachers doing it. You turn on the news, they got that spirit of the P. Diddy on them. School teachers. Now, I have not seen a black woman yet. To God be the glory on my local news. It's just been all white women. And I'm praying for y'all. I'm praying for y'all, white women. Keep your head up. Now, keep going. But, yeah, you do got some people making you look bad. Now, now yes, it's my brothers on there robbing and stealing, making me look bad. But I've been seeing a lot of Caucasian sisters coming up on the news, sleeping with them 15, 16-year-old boys at the schoolhouse now. So you got to be mindful. You got to talk to your children about this. You got to check that phone. Y'all forgive me. I just need my desk. Because it's out there. And this thing is real. This thing is real. So you got to be prayed up now. So, hey. Keep your head up. Be mindful. Be prayerful. Be diligent. And I'm, I'm going to... My wife sent me the stuff on P. Diddy. I'm going to keep up with this. And we'll keep teaching on this. And keep pulling some lessons from it. It's absolutely heartbreaking. And to be honest with you, it's like... It's good to see somebody get caught and this stuff get found out, but it, yet it's still at the same time still hurt you to see that the devil got a hold of somebody like that. Because because it's a part, certain part of it that make you think like, man, what did this man go through as a child? What did he see? What Who touched him? Like what happened to him? What did he experience for his mind to be so warped and so gone? And then you think, like, how's his kids going to feel? Like, what is kids thinking? What they going through? Like, to just think about, like, man, this my dad that I love, that I hung around, that I was around. And, and the thing about it is it just make you wonder. And it's just like, man, if a person is that sick, could they have touched their own daughters, touched their own son when they was young, when they was little? And you don't want your mind to go there. But you got to, because it's like, at what what is what boundaries does this demon have? When this demon inhabits somebody and it find a host and it go to using them, the goal is to steal, to kill, and destroy. See, we hear that, but we just we saying it like a poem. The devil want to steal, kill, and destroy. But are you listening to the words? What do that K word mean? What do that D word mean? That's destruction. That's annihilation. So will somebody with that spirit not strip the dignity and the innocence from their own son and daughter? Because it also want them too. The demon want them too. It want to destroy them. 
And like they say, the apple don't fall far from the tree. So it's like, when we hear all about the debauchery of Will Smith and his wife, and then we look at their kids, we're not necessarily seeing peace and happiness and integrity and self-love. You look at the children and you and you just start praying, Lord, bless them, Lord. Give them what they need, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. Lord, bless them, like, Lord. Just heal them, help them, like. You know, when I seen a young man boo-hoo crying on the internet, the boy Jaden Smith, it's like, man, this stuff is real. These spirits is real. These people be out here, moms and dads be out here in Hollywood, witches and warlocks. Like this stuff real, like you and see this is the thing. Your children listening to their music. So that's why I have to talk to my son about that. And it, it, it's been a few times the way if I see his spirit change, that entire playlist get deleted. That entire playlist, Dad, I got over a thousand songs. Delete. I don't care. I don't care. Spirit, give me that phone. Ground it. No phone, no video game. And get talked to. Hour at a time. Two hours at a time. Three hours at a time. Listen, if you if you want to take a stupid pill, if you want to take a stupid pill, your blood ain't going to be on my hands. The Lord ain't going to be able to say, I didn't train you up in the way that you should go. So whatever come to you, it's coming to you because you chose it. Not because you were not prepared, not because you were not taught, not because you didn't have a positive, righteous example to look up to. That's something you chose because everybody got their free will now. So we could do all we can for our children. And they still go go rogue for a little while. And we just got to pray to God, show grace and mercy and give them time to get back on that narrow road. But you got to be mindful of this thing because so. That's why a lot of people told me, why don't you go talk to this person directly? I'm not really concerned with grown, musky, nasty, booty adults. I'm thinking about the youth. I'm thinking about how these spirits is coming to steal, kill, and destroy and disrupt the future. Disrupt tomorrow's hope, tomorrow's glory, tomorrow's grace, tomorrow's mercy. I'm thinking about that. These, these Big nasty body adults, they done made a decision. They done chose. They say, oh, I'm finna write my name in blood. They done chose to eat the apple. They done chose to go on that side and to be nasty and to be disgusting. I'm hoping don't nothing come out on Jay-Z behind because when these rumors started coming, that's when he started letting that hair go. Now he walk around looking like who shot John and forgot to kill him with all that money. You can't pay me to have my head looking like that if I'm a billion now. I'm finna be lined up crispy. That's not, that to me, that represent a spirit. That represent what's going on now. And you being mighty quiet. And then the young man who was on making the band, he said that cheesecake they went to get was for Beyonce. He said Beyonce was upstairs. He he said Pete did say I don't want this cheesecake. Take it up there to take it upstairs to Beyonce. What the world Beyonce doing now? Where was Jay Z at now? What's going on now? You see what I'm saying? It's a lot of spirits. And then here go Beyonce. She come out there. She got the Baphomet on her. She got the Baphomet on her um on her outfit. The little devil thing. She got all that demon stuff. And see, this is what I try to tell y'all. Anytime somebody say something about Beyonce and all that demon symmetry, here come Michelle Williams opening her mouth. I, I just want to say, y'all need to... Y'all need to stop. And that's what I try to tell you. That right there is demonic. When you see somebody playing with the Lord and playing in the, the children of God face and you come out and you defend them just because that's your friend, you choose a man over God. And so when people be talking about Tony, don't you know such and such? Yeah, I know them. I don't know them no more because they done turned their back on God. They not hearing from the Lord. They could have called me. They could have asked me my opinion. 
They got, I don't know them no more because they don't want to be known. They want to work for the devil. Okay, go right on ahead. I'm not finna be nowhere near you. I'm finna do what the Bible say. I'm coming from out among you. I'm finna have no association with you because you done chose to work for the other side. Yep. A young lady, she wrote me the other day, one of my clients, she say, oh, you and uh, Anthony O'Neill must not talk no more. I say, yeah, I, I, I done talked to him not long ago, but I said, what that mean? I say, you mess around and do something stupid. I'm going to be talking on you. I say, no, I don't care about that. I'm, there's no friends over God. I'm not, I'm not out here to protect nobody's name. If you are representing blasphemy, sacrilegion, ignorance, and you misleading the children of God, and I see it, you're getting spoke on. You get spoke on. I'm teaching on it because I have a responsibility to God to shine a light in the darkness. I got to answer to God. I don't care about nobody's friendship because a friendship ain't got no heaven or hell to put me in. A friendship on earth don't hold my eternity. I don't have an alliance and an allegiance to man. I am a son of God, and that's who I work for. So if you take a stupid pill and you are deceiving in the body, and I see it, I'm going to call it out. And I expect the same thing to be done if I go out here and start sleeping around with somebody, sleeping around with people, but carrying this message. And somebody find out, oh, he sleep around. I expect to get exposed. That's why I don't play with God because I know exposure always going to come. And it could be good or it could be bad, but it's going to come now. It's going to come. See, I know God for real. That's why I don't play with him. That's why I don't play with him. And I and I could tell when the Lord giving somebody grace. When the Lord give us grace, the Lord telling me, he's sending me messages right now in this season. He's showing me right now. He said, listen, I'm blessing you. Because this world getting ready to go through. It's going to be different types of famines. Different types of recessions. Get your affairs in order. No, check your heart. Don't worship mammon. Don't make things and material possessions your God. Be a good steward over your blessings. And think it not strange that before the famine, I send you a feast. Because you need to store up and fill up the barn houses. Because when the world go through, I done already provided for you. But if you did not read my word and learn about stewardship, you're going to suffer with everybody else because you did not listen. Go back and look up the children's story of the ant and the grasshopper. Go back and look it up and let and watch that cartoon of the ant and the grasshopper. We might need to watch it together on here one day. I might need to come on here and play it. And see, don't just look at it about food and money. Also think about the spiritual famine. Think about in five years from now, a lot of these mega pastors could be sat down. A lot of these churches could be now about empty. Do you know him for yourself? Let me go and get on off of here. I'll be on here talk about a revival. Listen, we'll be on here revivaling now. Hey, God bless you. And thank you. If this is a premiere, I don't know if I decide to premiere or not. I, I don't like premieres. When they say premiere, that means I'm not live. Sometimes I'm on the phone coaching somebody and they like the YouTube say you live and all that's a premiere now. But I don't know if I'm premiering this or not because I really don't like being on that right now because everybody get to see it and get to sit there and people be chatting. But if this is the case, God bless the, the moderators and the Blessed Tribe members. Thank you for being members and thank you for the moderators. And God bless you. And, and hey, listen. These right here, my wife run this business, so she is a mom. She a mom first. So when you order these, make sure that, you know, this ain't no drug. It's just a supplement. So get a little time to get to you. 
And if you had a typo in your address, then it got to go all the way to that wrong address, then it got to come all the way back. So understand that now, God bless you. And then we got to get up there to the box to get it. Because we get a little notice, then we got to get up there and get it. So God bless you. Thank you for your support, wealthofhealth.com. Got a, got a, got another project I'm working. It, it'll be done maybe in a few months. I might launch that top of the year. So stay tuned. And remember, I do real business. I don't come on here begging for donations and all of that and doing scamming events. You come on here and you watch this, get this word in your spirit free of charge. And then I'm going to do real business. It's going to be a business transaction, not no spiritual deception. It's going to be real business that you supporting. And that's how I feed my family. You hear me? Hey, God bless you. We'll talk soon.